In practice, the exercise 2.14 nested numbers 3, we are asked to modify our code from previous output to produce the following output. Previous, um, our previous problem was 2.13 nested numbers 2. So we can copy this code and paste it into our solution here. Now we can modify it. First, we notice that we are printing all the different numbers of rows. We have four rows here. So we're going to have to change this to be 4. And another thing that we notice is that in, in the last problem, our number of rows was the same as the number of numbers that were being outputted at the same time. This isn't the case here. So we're actually going to remove this because we can't do it here. And we have to set the number of rows manually to be 4. Next, we notice that our numbers are still in a descending order, so we're going to still have b is equal to 9, b starts at 9, and b has to be, it says greater than or equal to 0, but we have only a 1 here. So we're going to change this to be just greater than 0, and we still have b minus minus because it's decrementing every single time. Next, instead of printing out 5 of every single number, we notice that if we have 9, it's printing out 9 times. If we have 8, it's printing out 8 times. If we have 6, it's printing out 6 times, and so on and so forth. So what we need to do is set c equal to 9, and get rid of this, and c has to be greater than um, 0. So if c, oh, c cannot equal 9, c has to equal b. That means if c is equal to b, b being 9, it'll print 9, 9 times. If b is equal to 5, c is going to equal 5 and print 5, 5 times. We have to decrement c now, and this should be the correct code. If we run it, we see that we've passed the test. So this is the code that will give us the correct output. And we can't say prints 5 of every number, we'll say prints b of every single number.